So for this project, I decided to do the field exercise where I went a day without my phone. The day of this exercise, I had a sleepover with my best friend Gabby the night before. She is also taking this class with me, so we were both going to do this experiment together. We turned off our phones right when we woke up, and the, the first thing we did was go on a hike because we didn't have really anything else to do. Usually when we wake up, we watch TV, but TV was out of the equation for this day. So we went on a hike, and we don't really use our phones on hikes anyway, so it wasn't that noticeable. On the hike, we decided to go to this Colombian restaurant, that, and we've been there on many occasions, but we couldn't remember where it was, and we couldn't use our GPS. This made me realize how depend, like how, how much we depend on our phones, like actually. We've been to this restaurant at least like 50 times in our life, and it's not like very far. It's like 10 minutes away from my house, so we should know how to get there. But the reason why we didn't know is because every single time we've gone to that restaurant, either one of our parents has driven or we use GPS. So um, we couldn't even call our parents at any point of the day. So like we have no way of getting help or anything. Um, and my mom was very upset about me not being able to use my phone because she couldn't track me. But I had a good excuse. So she couldn't get mad at me because I had proof. These parents got even more mad. They're helicopter parents and they calling my house phone the whole day, staying in contact with my mom. But that's beside the point. What I'm trying to say is we couldn't even contact our parents to find a way to get to this restaurant even for like phone directions because like we didn't have a phone period because we don't have phones from 1985 just laying around. But since like either our parents have always like driven us or since we always use GPS to get anywhere. So we never felt the need to like remember how to get there, which is really crazy. So we kind of just found our way there. And my friend Gabby is the type of person who takes selfies all day long, takes selfie videos all day long. <laughs> Gabby's the type of person where she has to post everything she's doing. And it made me realize how much a lot of people my age depend on social media for like validation or I don't know what it is. I think everyone wants to look cool on social media. Everybody posts only the fun things they're doing. They never post like bad things on their social media, which just like, it just makes everyone look like they're wearing a mask. And it makes everyone feel pressured to do like, fun things and people start to get a fear of missing out and like people get insecure about their own lives because they think everyone else's lives are a lot better than they actually are because that's the way social media makes it. So I think that Gabby's constantly trying to post things on her social media because she just wants to keep up with the culture of like her followers. Um, and she's following that trend. like of having that mask. She wants her life to look just as interesting, if not more interesting than the, all her followers and all the people she follows. Like, I feel like this is, there's a saying that our thoughts are not our own. And it's really true. If you're around something a lot, like it's inevitably gonna impact the way you think. It's gonna stay in your mind a certain way. She really wanted to take a picture of this food, but she couldn't. And that's all we were talking about the whole time is how much she wanted to take a picture of this food and blah, blah, blah. Um, so then after the Colombian restaurant, we left and we went and did some homework. I like the, I think at her house. I don't really remember. But we did homework and, um, I noticed how dependent education is on technology too, like digital technology. All my textbooks are a PDF on my laptop. And I thought that the closest way to doing homework under the guidelines of this experiment would be to um, turn my Wi-Fi off. So I went on my laptop, turned my Wi-Fi off, and only used the PDF as books because I don't have the books in real life anymore. And it made me think, if I did this experiment on a regular school day, I wouldn't even be able to. Because all my teachers use technology for their PowerPoints, to find videos to keep us interested. And it just goes to show that like, my generation really depends on technology not only for the social aspect of our lives, but also for like the educational aspect of our lives. And now we're starting to learn from technology more than we do our own teachers. And I know a lot of people feel like 
they can't trust their teachers, like everything that their teachers say because everything's on Google. So teachers really have to be on their shit. Back to the homework thing. We were doing homework and we couldn't listen to music because, you know, music's on our laptops and Wi-Fi. So yeah, I mean, we really didn't do anything entertaining enough for me to talk about in this video, but I've done this experiment on my own for fun. So let's get started on that. It's more interesting. Um, so basically, there there have been periods in my life where I've broken my phone for a really long time. So I'd go like months without my phone. And the first time this happened was in high school. Um, I broke my phone. My friends wanted to go to Coachella, so. We went to Coachella and I didn't have a phone, so that meant I couldn't contact my parents while I was in Palm Springs. Um, it meant that if I got separated from my friends at this festival, I would have no way of finding them. It meant I couldn't take pictures and videos of all my concerts and my experiences. It meant a lot of different things to me, but I didn't care. I went to Coachella and I took a disposable camera and I wrote my friend's phone number on my arm in case I got lost, but I didn't. So. Honestly, that was really fun um, because all my friends' phones got stolen at Coachella or lost, but mine didn't because I didn't even have one to begin with. And then the second time this happened, well, the second time this happened was when I was going to school at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. I broke my phone and I went to T-Mobile to get a new one and they were all, oh, like you can't get a new phone unless your parents are here because you're on their plan. And blah -de blah and so I had to wait until my parents would come to San Luis Obispo so I didn't have a phone for like two months and whenever I'd want to meet up with my friends at the library I would text them from my laptop and be like hey meet me at the library at 8 but usually when you tell someone to meet you at 8 like you get there and you text them like I'm here it's like oh where I can't see you oh like I'm next to the tree or whatever no I would get there at 8 and just stand there while everyone else is walking by on their phones, listening to music, uh, and like, I'm just standing there. And I felt like socially awkward. Like I felt like such an outsider in this like world of technology. I don't know. It was crazy. I felt so weird because I was the only person who wasn't on their phone. I'm not exaggerating. And I couldn't even text her that I was there. There was nothing for me to do while I was waiting. So I started braiding my hair. Um, finally she came. She, I couldn't even get a text that she was coming late, so I waited for 30 minutes. So, yeah, I did that for three months, and it was really fun. But yeah, I know I break my stuff a lot. But it felt even weird when I was walking to class when I, I didn't have my phone, because everybody had those AirPods in, everyone was listening to music. Must be nice. But that's a thing, though. It's like... People my age need to constantly be entertained. They need to constantly be like on something and keep their brain working. So when they're walking, they have to keep listening to music, I guess. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I do it sometimes, but it's like, it's just showing that like, the simple of act of walking to us is boring now. Like we can't just walk. No, I'm not exaggerating. Literally, there would be like one in 20 people wouldn't be wearing headphones. That's crazy. I like to do these experiments a lot, like going months without, like it's not just that I broke my phone, like I could have had my parents come to San Luis Obispo earlier, I could have driven to LA, but I liked not having a phone for three months. And it was nice, honestly, or two months, I don't remember how long it was. Um, but like, yeah, I'm constantly doing social experiments because I think they're really funny. But it also makes me realize how much society like values social media. Because like, I noticed, okay, when I didn't have my phone, I deleted my Instagram page, right? And I noticed that like, a lot of people kind of didn't trust me when I'd meet them at parties or in class, because they'd be like, oh, what's your Instagram? And I'd be like, I don't have one. So they couldn't like, I don't know. I feel like Instagram is like now like a backup check, like background check, sorry. I think Instagram now is like a background check. Like when you make friends, you go on Instagram and, oh, where did they go to high school? Because you don't want to ask those questions, I guess. Because now, there, another thing social media has done. Social media took away our conversations. Those are things that you should be asking people, not looking through their Instagram pages and finding out. I mean, like, 
oh yeah, what high school did you get to? That's a topic of conversation. Not someone, like you're literally stalking people. You're looking through someone's photo album and like we're all making our photo albums public. I don't know, it's just crazy to me that people weren't trusting me because they couldn't see my social media. Why does it matter? And like, people care about how many likes they get, how many followers, like, I feel like people, living in LA, you meet a lot of people who have a bunch of followers, so they walk around like, they're like some, the real shit. But like, just cause you have an, like a lot of Instagram followers doesn't mean like you're cool. But it's like, Instagram's like our social status and it's like it's kind of like that episode of Black Mirror that one episode of Black Mirror where I think it's called Nosedive where they have like social media and like real life and like when you do things you get likes or whatever and like everyone's social status matters because you can constantly see like how many stars someone has or whatever that episode is what our life is like right now but it's just working in the shadows you know like it's not in our face but yeah we do depend on social media like my friend just started his own catering business and they need to constantly be on their phones to take pictures, to attract clients, to this, to that. I deleted Instagram, but now I have to re-download it because I'm working and helping them start up this catering business and I have to re-download social media, which I fucking hate just for work, work, education, social life. What else? They're like, There's people on Instagram who are just famous because they post a lot, like influencers, for example. Example, Those vloggers do not, have, definitely don't have interesting lives. They just sit around and make videos with each other. And the only reason people like them is because they take videos every day. And like studies have proven that like the more you're, the more you're exposed to something, the more like you'll remember it and then you'll begin to feel like comfortable with it. Like for example, Geico, We've been watching Geico commercial f- commercials for years. We've been watching Geico commercials for years. And we all know the motto. It's Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% more on car insurance. And does anybody even have Geico? I don't know, but we trust it because we see it so much. Anyway, honestly, I've done this a lot. And the last time I did it was actually recently, over the summer. I went to Tijuana, and it's probably not safe that I did this, but I turned my phone off and let it die for two days. And I just hung out with my brother the whole time and enjoyed Tijuana. I didn't take pictures of anything. I just like chilled with my brother, we were doing things, and yeah. So for me, I felt comfortable doing this social experiment. I really liked it. I felt cleansed. I. I don't know. I feel like every time I do this to myself, I revert back to my childhood self. And I like try to remember things that make me entertained. Like, I'll organize things, I'll play with my dog, but I still do all those things. I'm just not, like, I don't use my phone very much. But now I have to for work, so it's really annoying. But I used to not use my phone very much. So, yeah, and everyone used to complain about it. But you know what? Life's changing, we're growing, I have to use email now. Like, everything is online. Oh my god, this is scary. I could ramble on and on about this topic, but I don't want to waste your time any further. It was fun. I really like not having a phone. And it was nice to tell everybody an excuse to not have my phone, because usually when I say I'm not going to be using my phone, they get mad at me. But they couldn't get mad, because I was like, this is the school. And then they were like, oh, we can't really say anything, because I gave them proof. Because now everybody needs proof. Another thing that the internet and digital technology has changed is that everybody needs proof. Like I was saying this early in the... Everyone needs like hard evidence nowadays. Like you can make a statement and everyone will be like, is that true? And they'll Google it right there. And I'll be like, okay, way to point out that I said something stupid. Whatever. People are constantly questioning credibility, doing background checks, you know. This world's getting crazy. We don't know what to do. It's crazy now. Whatever. But... Yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe.